Hello everyone, <laughs> my name is Bottle Top Hornet, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. <laughs> that was a pretty smooth little flight in here, I'm actually pretty happy with that. <laughs> welcome back to another episode. We are going to be working with some of these today, and some of these. So in a live stream recently, I went and collected a bunch of the different flower types. We didn't manage to get all of them. I do need to get some Lily of the Valleys and maybe one or two more types. But I do know that there are some Lily of the Valleys up here because the creepers blew them up while we were searching for some of those bees nests. So I think it was somewhere over around here. Mm. Just look for the big hole in the ground. Ah, there we go. Silly creepers. So I'm going to grab a bunch of these as well to start us off because these are actually my favorite flowers in Minecraft. And I will leave a couple of them here, just in a square, so that I know that uh, I can come back here and bone meal this area later, if I need more. We've already got plenty of those. We have all of the uh, double high varieties, actually. So, that's a random cat. <laughs> what are you doing out here? Huh. Anyway, we have most of the varieties of flowers that we want, and so, we're going to come across and we're going to do some work on a flower field today and also on a beehive bee farm, which we're going to do over here. I sort of put the question out in the last episode of where I should put it, whether it should be with the flower field over there or up here. I think I'm going to make the automatic farm here and then we're going to spread and breed some more bees down that way that can uh, be used for honey. So the bees up here I'm going to use for wax, but honey I'm not really that interested in using very often. So I think having just a couple of hives down there to passively build up a supply and we can grab a couple of bottles whenever we need will be ideal. The wax on the other hand, I definitely want to get up there and strip a bit of that, make it look a little bit more varied, and also I want to use candles a lot. So wax bee farm up here, honey passive bee farm down there. Yeah. So I'm going to grab some materials, grab those flowers, and I think we're going to start off by making ourselves a bit of a farm up here, and then we can finish off by doing some fun decorating down that way. Alright, let's get into the episode. Alright, so, materials gathered, got my bees nests ready to go, and this is going to be a ridiculously easy farm to make. If you're just using it for the honeycomb itself, you don't really have to worry about too much redstone things happening. So this should be quite easy to set up. So not going to have to worry about much other than eight dispensers and eight observers and a little bit of redstone. I've gathered a handful of just random building blocks. We're going to keep those on us, but put the rest away for now. We'll use a smooth stone just for the redstone purposes. And the last thing that we need is probably a handful of hoppers. Okay, uh, we're very quickly running out of iron. So an iron farm is well on the cards very soon. But if I just grab that, we'll go into our starter house here. Hello buddies. And we'll just craft up a handful of those and a handful of those. Now we'll go 10. <laughs> All right, so we're actually going to raise this up just a little bit to make it nice and uh, visible. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we probably want about mm, a little bit more of a gap through here so that we can create a path through. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to use eight of these here and then use an additional two down on the flower fields to hopefully breed up and start to increase the population that we have down there. So let's just make a little bit of space like so. And that way we can work through here. <laughs> this may be a little bit tutorial-y to start off with, but we'll get into some nice building once I've uh, built this up. So, ah, for starters, I'm going to grab a little bit of dark oak and we're just going to put that across the front here to make ourselves a bit of a barrier. I really love that new dark oak texture that they've added. It really is such a nice color. I'm just going to put these on the end to protect the rest of the landscape from this water. And uh, grab a little bit more and we'll fill that up. Now, if you want to get... Ooh, 
Oh, see, that's what I was trying to stop from happening. Oh, God. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. So, yes, if you want to set this up for honey blocks or gathering the honey in jars, you probably want to do it a little bit differently to this. But if you're just making honeycomb, this is a perfect example of something that is super simple to make and requires very little effort. We're going to put some grass behind here, grab our dispensers, and face them outwards. Ooh, they're going to go one more back. Hold on. Now we put our dispensers down. We're going to put a block on top of every one of those for our redstone. And then we're going to get a observer pointing downwards to where we're going to have our beehives. Nice. That, once we put our beehives in, is pretty much it. We just need some redstone on top. Now that's going to attempt to use the shears every single time the hive updates, but it will only succeed once the, uh, the honeycomb is fully developed. For this one, we are going to use... Hmm... Maybe Allium. I feel like Allium's such a pretty flower. So we're going to put some Alliums across here, like so. Just do some very basic blocking in of the area because we need to make sure that it is secure. Just going to craft a couple more spruce trap doors to cover up the water. And then we can put some glass on top of that. I'm personally going to go too high because I don't like the idea of the bees having to... Uh, to be stuck in a one high area, but you can of course do this slightly different if you so desire. So, with that, we are going to have to remove some of the glass, but that's okay. That should be ready to put some bee nests in, which I have at the ready. So, how do I want to do this? <laughs> as, uh, as carefully as possible, I think. So, I'm going to remove the bottom layer of glass. E there we go. <laughs> and then I'm going to place one down and have the glass at the ready. So place. And that was so silly. <laughs> of course it didn't work. Hmm. Let's think about this. All right. I'm going to get myself in there so that it is secure. And then we can place it down. So one there, one there one there and some of these are already ready to shear so we will have to be a little careful just make sure that it uh it continues to work and like that now can i place down some glass across here yes and escape <laughs> get back in your uh, your area okay nice 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 now all we need to do is go put some shears in there and it should be working. So I'm actually going to go and steal a few of the shears from the back of the sheep farm because one, we've used most of the wool we need for the time being and we've also got a little decent supply building up again. I need a far better way to gain access to the back of these than this because <laughs> yeah, we're going to grab mm, three out of each. But yes, that is obviously not ideal. Uh, I'm missing a piece of something. Ah, there we go. And uh, I should sleep. <laughs> I'll work out how to get in there once it's daytime again. Probably easier to just grab it from the front if I can see past these guys. Hello? There we go. <laughs> That's how I'm going to do it. Excuse me, I would like you to move your hitbox. Thank you. There. Eh, eh. Yeah. And now, with those in, this is where I realized that I forgot to put my hoppers down. <laughs> so we're going to go underneath here, like so. And I'm actually going to go into flying mode if I can, like so. And we're going to put down our hoppers to the end of here. So I'm just going to put a glass block that to there. We can get out of here block up the other side. Well, actually, no, we don't need to block up the other side just yet because we need to put an output chest. So there we go. We're already getting some honeycomb, which is great. It looks like the ones that were full have readjusted. We're going to have to see whether or not there's enough bees in there. We might have to breed them up a little bit. I didn't check that. 
I believe there should have been two in each and every one, but we might just grab some flowers and breed up a couple of extra just in case. These are renewable. Perfect. Now, can I get in there safely? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At minimum, there is at least eight, which is good. <laughs> but we, uh, we will be a little bit smart about this and try and get inside of there. So if I do this and then get down underneath here and up through a trap door. No, there's glass there, of course. Think, bottle. Think. Ooh, that was close. Okay. Now, we'll jump down here. We'll remove this. Please don't get into the water because I want to make sure we have some babies. More babies? <laughs> get out of the water. No, baby, no. You silly, silly things. This is not working, bees. You really are the dumbest. <laughs> <sighs> All right, let's rethink this plan. They want out so bad. <sighs> Looks like I'm waiting till nighttime until they're inside of their uh, hives. I'm going to sort out a little bit of a better system for <laughs> breeding them up and maybe get these guys back in as it goes to nighttime. That would be great. <sighs> I'll be back with you guys in a second. <laughs> uh, I did it. <laughs> that was way more effort than it needed to be. Let's sleep. Now, I didn't work out a better way to have them uh, breed, but I think we managed to get about four in there during that process, four additional ones. I'm hoping that that's enough. It looks like there's a decent amount in there regardless. It doesn't need to be super, super fast, so I'm going to call that good enough for now. We're actually going to put another layer of this across the front because I like the look of the stripped version of this around it. And then... We will put something, which I'm not sure just yet. What have we got in our materials? Maybe some copper on either side, but I might bring it back to that point. And since we have a bunch of honeycomb now, <laughs> that's what we like to see. So now that is a fully contained little area. We should be able to grab some chests, put those chests just there like so and a bit of glass and another 15 so we're already at 37 that's great plus minus two plus or minus you know what i mean so functionality wise that farm is done <laughs> i think i'm going to spend a little bit of time decorating the outside somewhat making sure that it looks nice and covered in i really like the uh, spruce and everything that we've got going over here i may even change over the roof on this to match up what we have existing now. I think it'd be nice to have a bit of continuity between all of those now that we have the materials to do so. So yeah, I'm going to spend a little bit of time fixing this up, fixing up that, and then we should be able to go down, work on that as well as go over and wax some of our copper. Nice. That's good. There we go. I heard one shear and there we go. Beautiful. You love to see it. <laughs> Bees. Okay. So now that we've got our wax, one of the things that we can do is wax all this up. And I'll have to check. Actually, let me quickly just check. Mindfeed in the comments suggested that maybe around the boiler here, we bring it back to more of the orange color, even fully back to its, uh, its shiniest variety. And I like to think that maybe that's because... The, uh, the copper around here is protected from moisture due to being so close to all of this heat. So we're going to wax some of this like that and like that. And then we're going to transition it back through with a little bit more like this. I like that. Actually, we'll go a little bit. Huh, wax off, of course. Go a little bit more around that. So it's nice and shiny there. And then we can go back up through the middle and just vary up our stuff around the balloon a little bit, ever so slightly, nothing too serious. And we might leave it fully oxidized on the top just so that it, uh, well, mostly fully oxidized, just because that's where it would be exposed to the most weather. Whereas under here, it would possibly be a little bit more protected. Yeah, I like it. 
<laughs> adds a little bit more character, a little bit more flavor to the the ship itself, and it does give it that slightly more steampunky feel. I think maybe hmm, now I, I don't want to risk it too much with the lava and everything, but maybe I was thinking something on top of there. I'll fiddle around with it as I uh, as I see fit. I think that needs to be waxed. We might do those two as well. And this is why having that farm set up is super convenient because very, very quickly, when you have a build that is made mostly out of copper or has a lot of copper in it, you're gonna run out very, very fast. Those two and that one and maybe that one. <laughs> what can our last one be? There. So I'm gonna have to let the, uh, the farm continue to work. And I think what we'll do is head down and begin work on the flower farm. But there's one thing that I want to do first. I have most of these different types of flowers in this shulker box. We may be missing one or two, but in general, I've got a good supply that I can probably use for making up my entire uh, flower farm or flower fields over there. It's raining. But there's one that's a little bit newer that I know I saw a tree leading to one down here. In this let's play so far, I haven't actually really explored a lush cave. I haven't gone in there and grabbed any materials, but I do know that somewhere along this area, there it is, <laughs> there is an azalea tree. And I dug down a little bit just to grab some of the, uh, the rooted dirt and see what it was about and realized it was a lot further down than I intended. So, we're actually going to go and explore that. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Hi. We're going to go and explore this little area down here. And I want to get myself some of the uh, the blossoms. What are they called? Azalea blossoms? I'm not sure. Craft up a handful of torches just so that we can light our way. And we should be fairly safe to dig straight down here. Just because there's going to be water and, and a cave down there that I know of that shouldn't have lava in it. Knock on wood. That's a lot of rooted dirt, though. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, yes. This is actually a fairly decent little spot to spawn in on. I'm going to quickly make sure that it is all safe and sound around here. That way I'm not worrying about mobs. And then we can grab ourselves some of this. I probably need my shears, which I don't have. <laughs> so we'll make a couple more. And I'm silly. Of course, you grow this with the glow berries. So we're going to grab those. It's been a while since I've used these, so it's easy to forget for a moment. But now the thing that I'm really searching for is a fancy little flower up on the... Ooh, deep slate. <laughs> Always on the lookout for the deep slate variety of coal to add to our little stockpiles. Any more? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. But I can see a particle there from this. That is what we're after. A spore blossom. <laughs> I haven't actually used these in any builds yet, so I'm super excited to give it a bit of a try. Seems like there's another one there. That's perfect. Let's see whether I can get to that. Uh, eh. Eh. Come on. Really? There we go. We'll jump down and grab that and keep an eye out for some more. Because what I want to do is... Even though when you're directly below them, you do get a little bit more of the particles. Ooh, diamonds. Eh. Just having them in the general area does create particles around. So I want to add those into my farm or into the uh, flower fields so that as you're walking around it, you get to see those little green particles flying in the air. And I think that'll look really good. Oh, creepers. Ooh, diamonds. So I'm going to wander around this cave a little bit see whether or not there's any more, which I'm sure there is. Eh. Once I've got myself a good little supply, maybe like 10 to 16, I hope, I'll be able to spread those throughout the field and then have a nice even spread of the particles going around through all the flowers. It's going to be super pretty. So I'm going to explore this and then we'll get back up top and have a look at starting our flower field. Ooh, there we go. Nice. Oh, and uh, one of these for the road. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I've got my 16 spore blossoms and a bunch of other random stuff. 
<laughs> I forgot to bring myself a uh, ender chest, and that's something that I think we need to probably grab a handful of spares for, so that I can always have one with me. But we can put away some of this stuff, and we'll put away the diamonds. Got a bunch more deep slate coal ore, which is kind of cool. The normal coal can go in there. And I'm going to set myself up, and I think we're going to pop into a time lapse. <laughs> uh, Enderman, stop it. This is definitely outgrowing the, uh, the corner of the room, but we're going to keep stacking it up a fair bit for now. Like so, and yeah. <laughs> we have a good supply of that built up. So, one thing that I want to do before we start the uh, time lapse is just check out how it's going to look with a couple of different kinds of leaves. So, if I put away a few of these things uh, just to get them out of my inventory. In fact, I'll go up and sleep and I'll put the redstone stuff away. It's nearly the end of the night, so we'll just put it away by itself. And that, and that, 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 and that. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness, he said. <laughs> I've trained myself way too well to avoid swearing <laughs> while I'm recording. That's hilarious. Please don't make fun of me for that. <laughs> oh, goodness, he says. <laughs> like some proper Englishman. Oh, my goodness, that's funny to me. <laughs> but luckily that didn't destroy anything we can put some of this stuff away in here and we'll get rid of these blocks in here oh man that's so hilarious so what i'm going to do is use my silk touch pick we're going to grab some oak leaves like so I think we'll go and uh, grow an azalea tree as well because I want to get some azalea leaves and we might grab some spruce or some jungle because what I want to do is put them down there and see what they look like from a distance color wise. So you can see that the oak is maybe a little bit saturated. The green of them all together is maybe a bit much. So something along the lines of the azalea or something slightly different colored to match in with the the grass color a little bit more would be nicer. We have some flowering azalea leaves there. Some spruce. May as well actually take these ferns with us too. But other than that, we've just got random bits and pieces spread around. Oh, some spare cobblestone. That's good. This stuff is slowly oxidizing as well, which is really nice. <laughs> we'll eventually get rid of the whole thing and have our lake back. But if we pop in here and grab ourselves an azalea bush, like uh, so, <laughs> we'll just grab two. And I also probably want a spruce. Let's try that out. So we'll quickly grab all of these leaves, or at least a decent supply of them. Since some of them are a little bit high, we'll do some spruce as well, because these are a far darker color, a little bit more uh, flat, if that makes sense. And then what I want to do is probably, oh, we can keep that actually is uh, put down some walls of the uh, of the leaves. So let's just use this spot here. Go one, two, three, four. I might also do one with the uh, flowers in there just to see whether from a distance that creates any sort of difference. We'll grab some normal oak leaves and then we'll grab the spruce. So you can definitely already see from this close that they're quite different. But it's from a distance that I want to uh, have a look at it. I'm actually going to thicken these out so that they have uh, leaves behind them, just in case, because it can change the, the color a little bit. So that like that, that like that, that like that. And then we're going to fly over to the hill over here and have a bit of a look-see. Actually, we'll do it from up top. Have a bit of a look-see at what it looks like from a distance. Okay. So yes, I think maybe the normal azalea is the closer to the green of the grass around there that's definitely standing out it's a lot darker and if we wanted that we could use it but i kind of want to have it blend a little bit because what i'm going to do is create borders or hedges around the edge hedges around the edges <laughs> hedges around the edges of each section of flowers and we're going to have the flowers separated into their different types so i am thinking the azalea and the azalea with the flowering mixed together could look really really nice 
I think the oak's just a little bit too saturated of a green, and that's way too dark. It stands out almost most of all. So, okay. Azalea it is. It's a lovely leaf color, and I think it'll, uh, it'll blend in there just nicely. I've been wanting to get rid of this for so long. <laughs> that has been there since I think we built uh, our little mine entrance in episode three. Oh god. So is this. This has been here for that long too. Clean it up. <laughs> but with that, I think we have the idea for uh, colours, as in using our azalea leaves. Yeah, it just, it's much nicer, especially with the grass around. We'll grow some grass and we'll use that. And... Uh, It'll blend in just nicely. So I'm going to pop into a time lapse. We're going to see what we can do as far as building up a good little flowering area, a little flower fields. Make it look nice and pretty. Cover this hillside a little bit and add a little bit more detail around our manor. And we maybe get some roads down beside it all as well. That'd be nice. So I hope you guys enjoy this time lapse and I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> Look at this area. Doesn't that look amazing? It looks so dense around here. Ah. So this is our flower fields. We have ourselves some bees working away in their little hives. That's actually full. That's good. And basically every single variety of flower that I had, I'm pretty sure that's almost all of them, but can't be 100% certain. But we have... A nice little area now for all of these things to sit. I've got these nice little hangers here for the blossoms, the spore blossoms. And I even managed to chuck in a couple of the berry bushes. Some of the, uh, what do you call that? I can't even remember what they're called. Drip leaf. <laughs> some of the drip leaf hanging around this little pond area near our creepers, our charged creepers. And all sorts of random stuff. I kind of just started adding bits and pieces to it as I went, making these double high ferns, adding the ferns throughout to break up the color a bit, make it feel a little bit more full. We have over here some glowberries growing, and I decided that I was going to expand these paths and these roads so that they were a little bit more complete. So now this road goes all the way up to the top where we have our newly roofed starter home and a little bees area, apiary, I think apiary is correct. <laughs> And some of these posts around, as well as I put some spore blossoms in these trees to continue that particle effect around this area. 
So I haven't actually gone up and had a look yet, but I'm going to pop up here and see what it looks like from the sky. I hope it looks good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I'll definitely debate whether or not I want to add some more coarse dirt throughout the uh, pathing just to make it look a little bit closer to that style. But I think that looks pretty damn good. So now we have some serious paths going through here. I love that there's the little deviations, the little forks going up to different areas. There's another fork going up to the back door of the manor there. And we have plenty of room around here to work on a, uh, a church and all sorts of other things, I'm sure. We can think of some things to go over this side. And then if we duck down here, I really didn't go too crazy with the building around this. I just wanted something basic that worked well, covered everything up nicely, and uh, yeah. We still have access to the back of it to change over shears if we need to. So I don't actually know how well this has been going. Ooh, okay. That's lovely. We've got heaps of that growing then. Growing, producing. That's good. And now our starter house is a little bit more in line with the rest of the builds. Still slightly different, but the roof does tie together quite nicely. Oh, I love that though. I love that it just adds a little bit more there. Landscaping is something that I should do more often just to make it tie together everything. We plugged that hole that was over in the ground there. And there's one last thing that I want to quickly do. Oh, actually two things. One, mine up all of the stuff of this that is oxidized. In fact, a lot of it has, that's great. Beautiful. Only a couple more pieces to go. And then uh, this whole thing will be cleared of the copper. Nice. All right, so <laughs> what I do want to do is remove this chest from here. I removed all the horses and we took the horses over to our stable. And they've been temporarily put in here, but I just need to get rid of this, finally clear up some of that junk that's been sitting there forever. <laughs> and uh, that way I'll feel like I'm a little bit more completed in this, this whole space here. But I do love this. I love... The feeling of uh, walking up here and seeing just little details that have finally been added, like lampposts. And I'm sure this will look lovely in the nighttime. We might even go around and add some hidden lighting to our flower fields if I can. Just so that it glows in the night, you get a bit of uh, a nice atmosphere. But I need to clear out this inventory. It's getting ridiculous. So give me a second to do that and we'll go over and grab all of that junk. And then yeah, have one last look at what we've managed to do this episode. This is going to be so satisfying. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Okay, so once I get these put away, I'm going to let you guys know what we're doing for the next episode, which is episode 30. 30 episodes into this new series, and I feel like we're just starting to, uh, just starting to get into it properly. <laughs> I'm starting to tie things together, finish up some areas, and get ready for a little bit of a new expansion. So, it was my birthday the other day, and uh, as such, over the weekend, spent a fair bit of time catching up with family, and that's why this episode's taken a little bit longer to come out. That does look really lovely. But, with episode 30 being a bit of a milestone, we're going to do a Megasode. Now, if you haven't been around since my last season, in the last season, every now and again, I would do a Megasode on a variant of 10, so like episode 30, episode 40, and such, and I think I want to make a lot of progress towards planning out, making up this seawall, covering it back in, like that's just been floating there for so long, and so has that bit at the back. I want to really make some progress on that whole area there and maybe even connect it to this area with some bits and pieces. So, it is going to be a longer episode. I'm thinking even closer to the 50 minute mark is possible. So I hope you guys are okay with that, and I hope you're looking forward to it. I'll also be working on the next Vault Hunters episode, and that should hopefully be out by the end of this week. But with that being said, I am going to say thank you very much for watching, and thank you to my level 3 Patreon supporters. I appreciate you guys so much. Ness, Shifu, Evan... Carl, Tessie, Reedman, and Twistle. Thank you guys. I appreciate it a lot. And everyone who supports me doing all of this stuff, I love your faces. <laughs> I hope you guys have been... Oh, it's getting so dark. 
How about this? I hope you guys have been enjoying the series. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I hope you're looking forward to some big stuff to come. I think we're going to really push to do some more impressive things from now on out. We really started to set ourselves up with all the basics that we need. And it's a lot easier each and every time to, uh, to get ourselves the items that we need to, to work on some bigger projects. I've actually been spending a lot of time in between episodes, just grinding away, trying to gather some materials. Oh, I hit my head. <laughs> so that I'm prepared for this episode 30. So I have come over here, gathered some spruce logs. I actually have some more stored away somewhere, I'm sure. And along with collecting this stuff from when we were looking for the, the bees hives or the bees nests, I've also gathered a little bit of dark oak and I've got more stored away somewhere as well. About a shulker of each, I would say, stored away. And I have been down in my mines and collected about a double chest worth, if not more, <laughs> maybe even slightly more worth of deep slate and I think that's what I'm going to do after this episode is try and collect a little bit more from my mind down here which you can see I've been chipping away at all in preparation for doing some crazy amount of building in the next episode so I hope you guys are looking forward to that and yeah I hope you're taking care of yourself <laughs> until the next episode everyone take care and I'll see you then <laughs> bye bye Whoop. <laughs>